Thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see me play your deck, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community in Discord, access to my lists and sideboard guides before tournaments, book an individual coaching session, or just generally want to support what's going on here, check out the Patreon and YouTube membership options. For the finest Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, use code Bosch and Roll for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com and play any deck anytime on Magic Online with a cardhoarder.com loan account. Thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber Red Rags, I am playing Rakdos Midrange in Pioneer. A couple weeks ago, I played Mono Blue Spirits as the first of three Pioneer videos that I'm releasing in preparation of MagicCon Philly, where Pioneer is the main constructed format. This is the deck that I think if I had to play Pioneer tomorrow, I would be playing myself. That doesn't mean I have a ton of experience with it. It's just hard to argue with the plan and value of this deck. First of all, you get Thoughtseize and Fatal Push, which are the best disruptive spell and the best removal spell in the format and just four of both of those. And then you get a bunch of powerful creatures with two for ones stapled onto them or additional value stapled onto them. Misery Shadow is just passive graveyard hate that also is just an enormous creature. Blood Tithe Harvester, three two for two that gives you card selection and removal. Broxa is a late game grind. That's also just discard and damage. Graveyard Trespasser, built-in Graveyard Hate with a 2-for-1 attached. It has Ward discard a card. If they want to kill it, it's going to cost them two cards. Bonecrusher Giant, kill a thing, make a giant thing. Eeky Jeeky, or Fable of Mirror Breaker. Like, obviously, this card is just in basically every constructed format. And, of course, Shouldred, the Bug Mother herself. Hard to argue with this one. This is just a study in efficiency and value in the Pioneer card pool. This deck even gets to bake a ton of value into its mana base. Castle Lockthwain when you need cards, Den of the Bugbear, and a Hive of the Eye Tyrant both attack. So can Zon attacks. Dakanuma regrows your creatures. There are 24 lands in this deck, and fully half of them have additional text other than tapping for mana. Just crazy, crazy value. Reckoner Bankbuster. I don't know if this has become fully stock in the main. This spot used to be Unlicensed Hearse, but I think Misery Shadow probably replaced a lot of that. Reckoner Bankbuster really cracks open the mirror in the grindy matchups, just draws a ton of cards, then is a giant creature at the back end. And I wish I had more to say about this deck. It beats up your hand with Kroxa and Thoughtseize, it beats up your board with all the removal, and it beats up your face with these gigantic thick bodies attached to two-for-ones. Like, there's not much to say. This is kind of like the old modern Jund, or standard Jund, where everything was just a two-for-one or better, and... It got to bake in all the best disruptive elements. I see tweets with this deck every weekend. Won the Pioneer Challenge with Red Black. It, yep, sure did. Last time I played Pioneer at an RCQ, I lost round one to this deck. I was on Phoenix. I wasn't happy with my choice, but it's what I could get together on short notice. I lost to this deck in round one, and then my opponent ended up winning the tournament. Just a lot of data points over the years. This deck doesn't need my encouragement to for people to play it. I'm going to stop rambling here. I'm just looking at all these cards and I'm like, yep, I like that. Yep, I like that. Not a single card in this deck I don't like. And all we got to do is sequence them correctly and beat all our opponents. Let's go play some Rakdos Midrange in Pioneer. I'm on the play in round one with Thought Season of Blood Tithe Harvester. and to cast it. All these lands do stuff. Easy keep. Start with the Thought Seas. What you got? Okay, we're playing against spirits. I can pick off this ascendant spirit basically any time. I'm gonna take rattle chains and deal with the ascendant spirits as the game goes on. Rattle chain stuffing my removal is kind of annoying. Mono blue spirits though is a great deck to get a look at and know what they're exactly they're working with because they have so many tricks. This is the deck I recorded the other week on the channel. If you want to see some gameplay with this, it was actually really great. I was impressed by the deck. There's one of the spirits and one of the lands. It Groxa. I'm going to get a Blood Tithe Harvester going here. Kind of sucks that this 
land doesn't make black. But Harvester is also a removal spell. Okay, they're offering this trade. They can pump this to be a 2-3. And then they're tapped out for the next turn. Yeah, okay. I'll take that deal all day, every day. 3-2 and 2-3, trading off. Leaving some residual value behind. Missed on the land drop. That's a shame, but I have another one of these. And send it back. They've got the Ascendant Spirit now. With... Holding up rattle chains or pumping. I'm going to attack and just offer this trade. If they pump it, I can fatal push it in response, and then they have nothing. I'm going to discard Kroxa to a blood token and try to hit a land drop here. This also leaves a fatal push for good measure. Bummer. If they pump here, I fatal push. If they chains here, I fatal push. Let's get that out. And missing all these land drops has been pretty bad after that initial poke. See what they were up to. Okay, now that's better. I am going to shock in Blood Crypt so I can Thought Seize and Fatal Push this turn. Or, and go for the throat. It's kind of now or never on Rattle Chains. Unless they have multiples or they could have Geist Light Snare. Regardless, I am putting them in a tough spot here. Here's the Chains. They're giving Supreme Phantom Hexproof. That's fine, because Rattle Chains is the card that I want to kill here. Geislate Snare and Curious Obsession. I'm taking the Obsession. I can play around a Geislate Snare, but if they start drawing cards, I'm in trouble. Back with my 3-2 into your 1-3. That's why I let them have the Supreme Phantom. Land, okay. That was honest of them to deploy that. Blood Crypt, okay. I'm going to attack for 3 and flush out this Geislate Snare somehow. I could jam one of the Shouldreds in my hand or the Kroxa from my graveyard. I think I should play the Shouldred. Because I can replace Shouldred, I might not get another 5 cards in my graveyard to escape Kroxa again this turn. Or this game. They have to counter either one. And Shouldred being legendary, if one of them resolves, I can't play the other one anyway. Just got them Hellbent over there. Supreme Phantom number 2. Okay, Shouldred's just going to crush this game. And Kroxa might win this game even faster. And I like gaining life in this spot. I don't want to get cheesed out. And I can't attack. They do have a 2-4 over there. Take 2 from the draw. Now Curious Obsession is a punish. Which was their best draw earlier in the game. Oh, just jammed a land. They're so dead. Kidoki. Hildred gains me 2 life. I think I just shoved Kroxa here. I could loot away this mis Misery Shadow, draw another card, gain some life, but I don't need it that. Yeah, I'm just casting Kroxa. It deals three to them right now. Then I get to attack with Shouldred, which they can't kill or trade. And they take two on all their draw steps. Yep, that was an absolute kicking brought to you by Thoughtseize. Now we go to the sideboard. Rending Volley, pretty easy. Deal four to target white or blue creature can't be countered. Yes, please. Look at the rest of this stuff. I'm just going to go card by card here. Get myself familiar with the plan. Extinction event. Exiling a large amount of creatures could be reasonable. I don't like go blank. Target player discards two cards, exiles their graveyards. I'm not going to play Mind Rot against a deck that doesn't care about its graveyard that much. Not a Necromancy matchup. Their creatures are neither white nor green for Noxious Grasp. Still don't care about their graveyard for Hearse. Shadow's Verdict, Verdict, Exile, all creatures and planeswalkers roots with mana value 3 or less from the battlefield, and all of those from the graveyard as well. The rest is actually unreliable, because many of their cards that I care about are creatures in their hand. I mean, they have Geislate Snare and Curious Obsession, but I don't think I want to chase that sort of thing. Misery Shadow is big, but the graveyard doesn't matter. Agra Mauling is another instant speed. Removal spell. Graveyard Trespasser gains life. Bone, cr gr Bone Crusher is insane. I don't think I need to bank bust this matchup. This isn't really grindy. It's just about keeping damage off the board, and then my cards will beat theirs. Three has a lot of Shouldred, for, as far as four mana spells go. Like, gaining life sounds like a good thing. I think I can back off of a Shouldred. Definitely want these Rending Volleys. And then... Shadow's Verdict and Extinction Event are options, but I think with all my spot removal, 
just kind of keep their house of cards from ever getting off the ground. Is Dreadbore worse than Shouldred? And cutting removal seems strange, but I'm going up to removal spells, and Shouldred is how I get totally stable. It's a source of life gain. All right, I'll keep Dreadbore on the play. I'm out of time to figure this out, but got the Rending Volleys in. Yeah, this hand's real good. Keep it. I can kill their first two things and then play Fable. And in Spirit, you got it. I think I just light this thing up right now. It'll push. If you get into a game of chicken, you can lose it. And I just don't want to do that. Faceless Haven, Shacklegeist. That gets bone crushed. End of the bugbear. While well, it's free to do. Crush your bones. Just main phasing all this stuff. I don't want any of their rattle chains or counter spells to do anything. Okay, moment of truth. I'm out of interaction and they're up to three mana, which is when they can play a one drop and protect it in a turn cycle. Red boar. Okie dokie. I could play Fable and start moving ahead. I could play Bone Crusher and start bashing. I think it's Fable. I'm going to play Sokinzon and use it to cast Fable. They can Geislate Snare this. They can't Rattle Chains it. Okay. Rattle Chains in response anyway. You got me. Mausoleum Wanderer counters instants or sorceries, which Fable is neither. And the mana produced by the Goblin attacking is worth a lot. Helps get above the Wanderer. Two cards left over there. He didn't have a Curious Obsession. I'm definitely going to discard Kroxa. Deciding if anything else is going here. I want my land drop. I like this instant speed removal spell. Misery Shadow is kind of whatever. And I definitely want to discard both because that fuels Kroxa. Puts another card in the graveyard. Yeah, Shadow's just whatever. Thought Seize and Fatal Push. Don't mind if I do. I'm going to play the black side of this pathway. They can block with their 4-3 if I attack, but that's fine. We can Fatal Push that. Back for two. I have more mana to make decisions and plays with. Starting with Thoughtseize. Let's flush it out, whatever it is. Isolate Snare. I am... I mean, I can pay for this and still cast Fatal Push. Oh no, they have Wanderer as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to accept that Thoughtseize. Took Isolate Snare from their hand. Then Fatal Push the Rattle Chains. I'm going to see how this shakes out. We got another Rattle Chains. Okay. okay. They're out of cards. I sequenced that first because if I play the Bone Crusher first, then I know they can counter it with Mausoleum Wanderer. I'm just not interested in that. Got them empty. They played out their land from hand. Probably going to offer a trade with Faceless Haven here. I definitely would. And I am going to take the trade. I'm the control deck in this matchup. Oh, for the throat. My hand is three removal spells against the deck full of creatures. Back here with my goblin. And even though my hand is three removal spells, I believe that just playing Kroxa is better. Yeah, I'm just shoving Kroxa into play. It's bigger than all their stuff. It races harder. It blocks their creature land. Do I want to play Hagramalling as a land? I think I do. That turns on Den of the Bugbear, and I can still go for the throat. And they're five in the air. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They are dead on the board currently. Play a swamp. And then activate den. It's gonna tap all my black sources because of Oh, I guess I need a red. I was about to say how smart I am. Leaving all my red sources up because they're also black sources. That's just not true. Yeah, I'm just going to attack with all my creatures, including the Kiki Jiki. Yeah, they're dead. Okay. A firm smashing of mono blue spirits in round one. On to the next one. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the draw against a Gigantha the Wellspring strategy. If I knew more about Pioneer, I'm sure I would know what this deck is already. Maybe Phoenix? I have a one lander on the draw. There's 23 lands in my deck. 
my one lander does contain Thoughtseize and Fatal Push, but we live in the London Mulligan world. I'm going to send this. This hand looks better. It doesn't have Thoughtseize, but it has everything else I wanted. I'm going to bottom Urborg on the off chance that it helps them. All my lands already tap for black. I don't need that effect. Unlucky Witness. Okay. When this dies, exile the top two cards of your library until your next turn. You may play one of them. Got it. Blood Tithe Harvester. Pretty Dece. That does get, on, get me on the board. Okay, it's a different red-black deck. The red-black Sacrifice is a slightly different deck than red-black midrange. Might take a turn stomping their Harvester instead of playing my own, because they can just kill mine. Okay, the Hive, Stomp, Harvester. And a 4-3 is just a respectable animal in this matchup. Unlucky Witness getting in. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add black, black, and draw a card. Okay. That one's going to be annoying to dig through. And I can't just jam my Bone Crusher into it. I think getting the party started with Fable of the Mirror Breaker, even if they make me sacrifice the token, it's barely a real card. Cauldron Familiar. That qualifies as another creature to meet the priest's requirements. They get to flip two cards, they can play one of them, and they get to draw a card, make a bunch of mana. Yep, this is good stuff. For someone, not me. They flipped two lands, Den of the Bugbear and Takanuma. And they have their own fable. Good stuff for, for them. Bone Crusher Giant, right on time. I would like to use Fable's ability. And I probably discard my Den. An ETB tapped land at this phase of the game. Seems... Reckless and wild. And I drew the untapped red source, which lets me Bone Crush and Blood Tithe Harvest. Stomp their priest and harvest some Blood Tithes. And then Shouldred's chillin'. They have more cards in their hand than me. By a lot, actually. Oh, that's only kind of true because I have the two Bone Crushers waiting. I don't regret bottoming that Urborg. I think I want to trade off with this idiot feel like it's my job to trade in this matchup. Maybe that's not true, but... Yikes. Okay, Shouldered looking real good here. Get the flip into Kiki Jiki. Play Castle Locked Wayne. And play Shouldered. Which, if they want to go in on this Fable, is going to hurt. And I have a squeaky clean discard to this blood token. I can get rid of this extra land. Lose two life. Would you like to lose two more life? It would like to lose two more life. It's true. I can't imagine this deck has some sort of high-end removal in it. Oh, this attack is scary. I'm not blocking this. I'm not getting my shouldered strangled. Ooh, fatal push using a treasure. That was smart. Okay. I'm going to use a blood to gain two life on the way out here. Too easy. I have an interesting decision. I can trade with this dingus so they don't get more of them or i can have my own reflection available i am not going to trade with this dingus unlucky witness does kiki jiki sacrifice sure does okay i understand the combo haunted ridge comes into play untapped does that do anything for me i could drop both bone crushers you can attack with a reflection see if they want to trade their reflection for it and then drop double bones hang back on shouldred yeah, I'll offer trading my Kiki Jiki for theirs. They said no bet, which is fine, because I wasn't going to block with Kiki Jiki, and I'm not going to have mana left over to activate it, so getting two points or offering a trade, both are good uses of that card. And big booties on the floor. Doing something in my end step. Deadly dispute. Cool. They found a mayhem devil and a witch's oven. They can cast one of those two things. That devil's going to be really good. They have a lot of treasures in play. There's the devil. You can copy this with Kiki Jiki and just delete me. Yeah, that was a really good hit. They copy Mayhem Devil. They can sack three treasures, kill both Bone Crushers, then attack for five, then sack treasure and blood, deal another four. I could reasonably just die this turn. <laughs> okay. And they claimed the first board in my Kiki Jiki, so they're going to have three Mayhem Devils. Yeah, we're dead. That was sweet. Okay, so I'm going to want grindy stuff and 
Graveyard Hate. That looks like Bank Buster, Shadow's Verdict. The hearse is. It's a go blank matchup. It might be a go blank matchup. Let's see what I end up taking out. Uh, Fatal Push doesn't line up well against much of their deck. Many of them come back. I want some, but I do have a lot of good top end removal as well. I love the Bone Crushers. I like the Graveyard Trespassers. Agra Mauling seems awful. Is Dreadboard too slow? Not being an instant. Not being able to break up. Mayhem Devil turns. Fable's obviously great. Bone Crusher's solid. Misery Shadow's great. Blood Tide Harvester might be medium. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go a little bigger, a little grindier. Let's get it. The thing about mid-range decks is they're supposed to go over some decks and under others. And this is a deck that I have to go over because they're going to get way under me. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Let's go. Ooh, <laughs> a hive of your own. I'll never find a more wretched hive. Okay, I can go for the throat if they play a creature this turn and then exile it with Trespasser. Okay. Blood Tithe Harvester. I'm just going for its throat. Get it out. This gives me something to exile, something to eat. Play this pathway on the black side. This will gain me one life and put a creature into play that is tough to answer and messes up future graveyard synergy for as long as it's in play. Mayhem Devil. Okay. Bankbuster and Shouldred. Just gonna mash Shouldred into play. Do I offer the trade with Trespasser? I think so. Not gonna exile my Gopher the Throat. Trespasser does read up to one. Then Shouldred get after it. Having this Gigantus monster in play with the redundant copy in hand. We can start busting banks next turn. Claiming the Firstborn. That's gonna make you discard a card. Discard a Den of the Bugbear. Okay. I assume they have some way to abuse this. And they're not just attacking with nothing. Deadly Dispute we've seen. Oh yeah. Big four. You draw two cards. You lose four life. Down to seven already. It'll pushing Shouldred. Reasonable. I can just jam the other one here. Yeah, I'm not going to start busting banks yet. There she is. The other copy. And if they can cleanly answer this one too, I'm actually in some trouble. I'll need to hit Shadow's Verdict before they're able to start activating their den. Doing something in the upkeep. Deadly Disputing. Okay, they're going to see if they can kill this before they draw any cards. Right. Yeah, they had the second Fatal Push, one of their last cards in hand. Okay, and doing it as they did it means they took zero from Shouldred, not even from their draw step. And Priest of Forgotten Gods. This would be a great turn to draw land. Fatal Push. Not quite what I wanted. I could try to bust the bank on my turn, hit an untapped Black Source. I think I should just push the, the Priest, though. And I can respond to whatever. They'd have to put a creature into play at instant speed. Okay. I'm going to bust the bank. And pass the turn. I'll respond to Unlucky Witness with Fatal Push on the Priest. I guess this did just open up Deadly Dispute. Not ideal. And I'm at 6. Like, this game is ending pretty quickly here. That untapped land. For this giant wrath in my hand. Could show up any time, please. A braid. And land. Come on, deck. Untap land. Asshole, I hate you so much. Oh my god. I'm gonna go to... Oh, I'm just dead. Yeah, I'm just dead to Den of the Bugbear. I can fatal push that, I guess. It's a bad scene. Bad scene all around. Even if I could kill Den of the Bugbear this turn, they're gonna run out of red sources for Ramanap Ruins. I at least have that going for me. Ugh. Yeah, just not hitting my fifth land drop is uh, making the difference here. What easy way do you have to deal two damage to me? Second devil. Okay. S literally sacrifice anything. Ever. Yep. Figured it out. Okay. Yeah, I needed to go over that deck. And by missing my land drops, missing on this wrath, never got bank buster operational, drew, never drew another card. They just ran me over instead. GG's, on to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online.
Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and every other format you'll see on this channel. They have multiple customizations so you can view your deck how you want. Text view, stacks, grid, custom grouping by type, subtype, color, light mode, dark mode. However you want to see your deck, they can provide it for you. My favorite feature is you can choose your set printing, make the deck look exactly how you want it to. The deck screen features expandable sections that show you what tokens your deck makes, your recent change history to the deck, stats about mana curve and opening hand distribution, mana cost distribution. You can deal out sample hands and even play test the deck. Island Ponder. You know I'm keeping this one. This site has everything. Follow me on moxfield.com to keep up with decks I'm playing for the channel and what I'm up to in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play against pioneer streamer extraordinaire Todd Anderson. I'm going to keep this hand. And let's just get a look at that hand. See what he's up to today. Discontinuity. Jesus Christ. As long as it's your turn, the spell costs two blue blue less to cast and the turn. Oh, or a lotus field something or other. Uh, I'll take the Jace, I guess. Lotus field enters the battlefield tapped. Okay. Yeah, that's how this works. They... Try to play the field and then end the turn before they have to sacrifice anything. Tough break. I'm going to play the Sulphurous Springs. Just in case there's something that I stop. We've already seen one Jace here. Maybe I just go... Oh no, they can end the turn. I try to stomp, which exiles my thing forever. Okay, I'm off it. Haunted Ridge and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Gotta get something going here. What I have going is this goblin. They're gonna have Lotus Field this turn. Play the field, end the turn. Yep, there's the combo. Okay, that's a Lotus Field in play. Would like to use Fable's ability. I don't need Urborg. And I don't think I need this Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, Shoulder It is a card with text on it. I don't know how much our drawing is essential to the combo. I am certainly casting her. Bug Mother, go. At the very least, there's Ottawa that can clear the Shouldred. I suspect that I'm going to want to use this turn to make another Lotus Field and try to win next turn. I don't know that I can stop that from happening without a Thought Seize. Ottawa is in play as an Ottawa. I will begin my turn. Something's happening to me. Oh, I'm just going to discontinuity. Right, that's a thing. Uh, do I have any plays to make? I don't believe that I do. Right. I was getting straight up time walked before I even draw a card. That works. Bullshit. In, that was mostly just explore. It has an extra land into play and drew a card. It wasn't as bad as most time walks usually feel. Very hero of Dominaria. That's a powerful card. Using it to tuck Shouldred. Played Hall of Storm Giants. Okay. Ichiki's going to flip this time. I do like this Kroxa quite a bit, actually. I'm going to attack the Teferi. That's not a card I can beat. Teferi's in the graveyard. I don't have enough cards to cast front and back of Kroxa here. I think I'm going to do Fable and then Kroxa. Fable gets me Re-Goblins and then Kroxa. Just try to disrupt this hand a little bit, I guess. Hope that whatever critical mass grinding towards is not there. Discarded a field, took three for it. Alrighty. Off we go. Can activate Hall, has plenty of mana to do that. Can discontinuity. Did not do that though. I'm going to discard some cards to make Kroxa happen. Discard another Fable and the Trespasser, or I could copy Trespasser this turn. Okay. Discarded Shadow and Fable. I can Kroxa here. One, two, three. One, two, four, five. Can I Kroxa and Shouldred? Maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. I could Trespass and Kroxa, but not give it haste also. Okay, I guess I'm just attacking with my goblins. I can block with Hall, but I get two treasures out of the deal. You still take two. And that clears the path for Kroxa. 
I am like he's got a discontinuity or some type of interaction didn't or could just be swinging for the fences on Lotus Field. I'm going to trespass first. Thought coming. Yeah, so did I. Counter target spell. So you have two counter spells over there, which then you're down to one card in hand and I'm not even upset about. I mean, the Kroxa is face up, so whatever else is happening here, he knows Kroxa is a possibility. Okay, here's the Kroxa. See this coming too? Copying Lotus Field in response. Go to one card in hand. Discarded Dovin's Veto. All right, might be a game winner. Let's find out. Two cards in hand. Lotus Field can easily win from this position. The cards are correct. All right, Teferi is kind of medium here. So you do get to untap two lands, one card left. They string together on discontinuities now. Only two left in the deck. It's a cool deck, though. Three Lotus Fields, untap two of them, one card in your hand. Haven't conceded yet, so clearly you want to keep playing. Discontinuity. Yeah, this works. There's nothing I can do here. If I copy one of my creatures, it's only non-legendary, so I can't spew Broxus here. Yep, that happens. If I copy one of my creatures, it doesn't sacrifice this turn because the turn is over. There's only one of those left. The Teferi is doing Teferi stuff. Played a land from hand and cycled another land. He's clenching the cheeks over there. I think we both have clenched cheeks right now. In my end step, I'm going to copy a goblin. It won't die till my end step. All right, one card left. One discontinuity in the deck. Jeeky jeeky flips. We didn't get discontinued. I will go to combat. And attack with goblin, goblin, Roxa, goblin. I have to worry about settle the wreckage here. This is a plenty lethal attack. All the same. Yep, there it is. You got me. That's fine. Get all the value here. I would like to use this ability. Some swamps. Uh, you go to four from the, the Kroxa trigger, because you have no cards in hand. And then Children puts the Mega Squeeze on you. So you go to two in your draw step, and then you activate to Fairy. That's another two. Did we get there? Still hasn't conceded. And you combo me out with one card without drawing a card. In the fairy can tuck Shouldred if the one card in hand gets the combo off. Okay, here we go. It's tucking Shouldred and passing. Oh, I could have made a bunch of Kiki Jikis in the end step. I don't think that matters though. I'm going to play Trespasser, which has plenty of creatures to consume. Exile Jace Brin's Prodigy, put you to one. Then copy my Trespasser, Exile Misery Shadow, put you to zero. Okay, we did it. Wild deck. That's really cool. What's going on over there? Okay, how do I beat a Teferi deck with infinite mana? Do I just treat this like blue-white control? Necromentia and hit Lotus Fields? Necromentia, Bankbuster, Duress all seem good. They all seem a lot better than Fatal Push. Rending Volley can put some damage on Teferi, but not, not effectively. I don't hate a Mind Rot in this matchup. I don't know if the Graveyard's going to be used, really, but love a Mind Rot. Oh, Noxious Grasp kills Teferi. Or target a creature or Planeswalker that's green or white. Uh, yeah, that's probably better than Dreadbore, just because it's an instant. And Bone Crusher Giant seems mid. That can put damage, I, and I still have Over the Throat in my deck. I don't want to go down to zero dread bores. Go for the throat can probably get cut though. I don't know if misery shadow matters. It's just another threat though. Does Agra kill a planeswalker? Nope, just creature. Also land number 25, which I boarded out Hagra mauling last round and then died because I couldn't hit my fifth land drop. I'm not saying those things are directly related, but they're not not related. I'm going to try it like this. I have the necro. Unfortunately, on the draw, that won't necessarily get down in time to take the Lotus Fields. We have Hive and Den here. I guess I'll play N. 
I'm going to play Hive and Den as my first two lands. And if I play Hive, then don't Thoughtseize. Oh no, I don't have Thoughtseize. If I act like I don't have the correct mana, it leaves some out available. I'm going to Kroxa, just start softening up the hand. One way or another, this is a critical mass deck that wants its cards. Art of Otherworldly Light is gone. And I can play Saw it coming this turn. I'm just going to go for Necro. And maybe I named Teferi Hero of Dominaria instead of Lotus Field, if this resolves. Dark Typhoon in response, okay. Lotus Field. Now I'm going to name the Lotus Field. Oh, would have gotten a Teferi out of the hand, but that hand looks bad. Let's take a look at this deck. There are four Teferis, three Supreme Verdicts, Strict Proctor. That's both reasonable against me and great in your deck. Dream Trawler, can never beat that. Airwell, okay. Fallbreaker Horror, let's hope that... uh. These things never come to fruition. I'm going to have to beat this Teferi somehow. There's the Hallowed Fountain. Teferi can show up next turn. Unless I draw Thoughtseize. Go blank. Oh my god. Well, that's not really where I want to be. I think I shoulder it here. Because that'll put him in the position of plus Teferi take a bunch of damage or minus to tuck shouldered. And then I can bone crush the Teferi the rest of the way dead. There's the beach. Ooh. You're a Dawnbringer. It's not Teferi. Big lifelink, idiot. Okay. I'm gonna... Misery, Shadow, and then Noxious Grasp? Do I want this in the graveyard or not? Didn't see any graveyard recursion from you. I do have the thing that eats creatures in my deck. Noxious Grasp. Misery, Shadow. That was a big swing. Just being able to answer that thing right away. Ugh. Yikes. Deserted Beach and Teferi in hand. Oh, no play. Is this Shark Typhoon? Oh no, it's Discontinuity. Right. That's a card that's still in your deck. There. In Time Walk. Opponent takes two and I take one on that Time Walk sequence. You got it. Deserted Beach. Is it Teferi time? Dream Verdict. Okay. Fair enough. One card left. It's Teferi. It's time to go blank. I clear the Teferi and everything else. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I was not at Kroxa. Wow, that would have been embarrassing if I could have Kroxa there and didn't. I can Kroxa now. Thoughtseize is really good. Maybe. It might do nothing. Or, I mean, it'll get the Fable through at the very least. No discontinuity in response. That's clever. Um, might as well spend my mana. Stomp you in response. And Discontinuity exiles Thoughtseize, so I don't lose two life. Maybe you're a Trespasser versus Kroxa. Don't know how many counterspells are in this deck. I'm going to go for Fable. Just the kind of middle-of-the-road play that's also scary enough that maybe it'll elicit a counterspell. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to play Chicken on this Kroxa all day. Until he draws Rest in Peace and I just don't get it anymore. We're told a card. Do I think this deck has Alrin's Epiphany in it, or is that just going to be Saw it coming? And you wouldn't do that. One, two, three, four, five. It could be... Oh, I literally looked at the deck. I wish I took a screenshot. Okay, I'll fire in the Kroxa. Did we see it coming? Yeah, I was not checking for Alrin's Epiphany. I, I have a... Some random commenter one time. I took a screenshot of my opponent's deck when I was surgical extracting them, and some commenter like went off about what a scumlord I am. For doing that which is obviously a preposterous take but i've still been like resistant to screenshotting opponents decks yeah i don't know if there's a, a doom scar okay behold the multiverse that one is more tolerable okay wouldn't have foretold saw it coming oh are we we're dream trawling okay if i can make them discard a card i win interesting okay i attack don't have to block with Dream Trawler. Okay. I'm gonna attack with Kroxa. Let's get this hand empty one way or the other. Shouldered looking really good right now. I have to discard the non-land. You have to block with something. I am one damage away from winning the game here. Or no, yeah, yeah. Or one mana away. I can harvester and trespasser, or I can shouldered. I think I want a shouldered. Just always want a shouldered. Old Bug Mother. Butcher to one. 
And then Dream Trawler has lifelink, but you draw a card when it attacks, so that'll cost you some of the life you just gained. Or, no, you die before the damage connects. Okay. You attack, you lose. And seems to understand that. Okay, I... Unless discontinuity hits, but then I still win. Yeah, I can just Graveyard Trespass and exile a card, or I could just attack with everything. I think I got him covered in two or three different ways here. Really cool deck, but we're able to pick it apart. On to the next one. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw for round four against another Gigantha deck. Do I think it's the same Gigantha deck? And if so, do I mulligan? I'm going to keep. I have a passable lands and spells hand. Harvester can harvest away some of these lands. And this is not the same deck. Okay. Lovestruck Beast is the start. I think I'm just going to drop this Blood Crypt in tapped. Good opportunity to do that. Ooh, Voice of Resurgence. I have no idea if this is a, an established meta deck or just something someone is doing, but uh, we're going to find out together. I'm going to play my Harvester and send it. A Fable that can dump Kroxa. Do I want to trade my 3-2 for an XX? No, I don't think so. Not yet. Voice of Resurgence. When it dies or when I cast a spell on their turn, they get an XX elemental where X is the number of creatures they control. Powerful thing. Misery's Shadow makes it a lot worse. It does stop the exile effect from happening. I think I still need to Fable. Yeah, that's just the efficient use of my mana. Or I could Misery Shadow zap the, the voice now. That's pretty awkward, though. But then I can loot away Kroxa. What's my plan for this 5-5 if I do this? You can sacrifice Harvester, target creature gets minus X minus X, where X is twice the number of blood tokens you control. Activate as a sorcery. And Shadow is just bigger than Lovestruck Beast next turn. Yeah, I think I'm in for this. Misery Shadow. I'm going to zap the Voice of Resurgence. It's in exile, and it's handled. I have a 3-3, three, three, or I have a Blood Loot. Portable hole. My hole! That's out of here. I'm taking big six here. That's a big hit. I got some creatures I can play, though. Got some stuff and things. Question is, do I discard my Pathway or my Kroxa? I could shortcut Kroxa into the graveyard or beat up on them. I think I need to dig for a removal spell, like some kind of interaction. I'm going to blood away the Pathway. Otzi's not what I'm looking for on this board. Bone Crusher Giant is not bad. Castle Lockthwain, Blood Tithe Harvester. Save this Kroxa, and I'm going to stomp the human. With any luck, that'll keep Lovestruck Beef from attacking. They need to control a 1-1 for that thing to get sideways. And because of voice, I can't wait till combat and zap it. There's a pretty solid 1-1. And I afford to take 7. And is anything getting better if I do? Alright, I'm going to take it. I'm going to need to double block this. Love struck beast at some point. Okay. I can minus four, minus four something. I could thought seize plus bone crusher. That seems risky. <laughs> and by risky, I mean literally lethal. My ways to double spell this turn are Kroxa plus Harvester. Yeah, I think that's the line. Missing a uh, land drop here hurts a lot. Let's see what they got. Sky Sovereign in the bin. Jesus, that's the second best card in your hand. Another Harvester. And I have to do nothing here. Double block the Lovestruck Beast to go to one. So let's see how they attack. I could block Lovestruck Beast and Land War Elf. They made the attack that I mostly expected. Double block Lovestruck. Into any sort of combat trick, any sort of trample. Also just add two. Sika's Chariot. Yep. That's a lot of two twos. My late total is two. Does this help? Does not. I'm still on five mana, maybe. But no, we're we're dead here. Yeah, that deck just kept the heat on the whole time. 
Good stuff, but not for me. Noxious Grasp, easy. Extinction Event seems important. Shadow's Verdict seems important. Keeping the board clear of big idiots. Akroxa actually seems pretty medium. I mean, it is a big creature eventually. I don't know if Thoughtseize is necessary in this matchup. I mean, Thoughtseize is always efficient in the modern format. Maybe I just go lower on them. I would rather have all these removal spells than Thoughtseize. I'm fairly confident of that. Buster is really slow and grindy in a matchup that I don't know is about that. Five removal spells in. Four discard spells and a card draw outlet out. Is that how I want to do this? Oh, Graveyard Trespasser is smaller than Lovestruck Beast on both the front and the back. Okay. I'm switching those back out for Kroxas. And maybe I keep a Bank Buster also. I don't think they care about their graveyard. And their creatures are just bigger than that creature. Alright, gotta look out for Essica's Chariot. But got a bunch of removal in there now. Okay, let's do it. Alright, well, we're gonna put Thoughtsies to the test in this matchup. Thoughtsies into Harvester and Shildred lying in wait. Opponent mauled to six. I love when opponents mauled to six when I have Thoughtsies against them. Dang. What are we working with? Brutal Cathar. Exiles the thing until it dies. Elvish Mystic gets them off the ground. Love Strike Beast is the payoff. Kind of like taking the Mystic. Can I ever beat a Brutal Cathar? I guess is the question. I have a shitload of removal in the deck. But this is close. It's either Cathar or Mystic. I mean, Mystic doesn't curve well because then they don't get to uh, Heart's Desire. Okay, I'm actually going to take the Cathar. There's Lair of the Hydrant, Elvish Mystic, as expected. And of the Bugbear, Harvester. I drew my fourth land for Shouldred, so we're, we're in business here. Cave of the Frost Dragon was not a card that we saw in their hand. Still working with perfect info here. Or no, they have one card I don't know about. Fair enough. I think I'm going to just blood away this basic swamp. Or... Black Black versus Red Red, does this matter? Red Boar. There's no Black Black or Red Red effects. I'm gonna dip this blood and sack or discard Swamp. Another Haunted Ridge. Okay, just what I was looking for. I can put the race on now. Yeah, let's go. They get to attack back for two here. I'm hoping Shouldred stabilizes that Elite Spellbinder. Yeah, take a peek. Which Shouldred do you want? That was a good choice of Shouldred's. And they just played Temple Garden. Now I'm back to perfect information. Who lands in their hand? It'll push. Solid. It's a big Shield Mother. I'll trade with your Flyer. Let's go. They know I have Takanuma as well. Taking their three. Taking another two here. Taking my three. Frost Dragon becomes a 3-4 Flyer for five mana. Okay. There's Basic Plains. There's Love Struck Beast. One mystery card in their hand. Stomp. That's a good one. And Love Shark Beast is bigger than Shouldred. I'm going to stomp Elite Spellbinder. And then cast the, the Bone Crusher. Try to gum up this board. Eventually I can trade Shouldred for Love Shark Beast when I have land number six to cast the other one. Or I maybe I just don't have to. If they attack with Love Shark Beast, they get cracked back for a gajillion. Yeah, they can't attack. They can't block. Just game is over. Don't think anything changes here. And right back in we go. Fatal push Dread Boar, Dread Boar. Yeah. Keep this. Shocked in Llanowar Elves. Normally there would be kind of a tricky decision to make here over whether I go after the Elf or try to wait for a better payoff creature. But the fact that my hand is just two more removal spells going for the Elf. Voice is a good one. Oh, that's good too. And of the bugbear. Do I want a Kroxa and continue reducing their resources now? Or do I want to invest in Shadow? Show me Portable Hole. I could Shadow plus Dreadboar two turns from now. I'm going to Kroxa you. Just get this started. Discarded Archon of Amiria. Jesus. That's a fucked up card. I do have a lot of non basic lands in my deck. 
And Anointed Peacekeeper naming Dreadbor is pretty solid. Blows me down a lot. If they name Shadow, I play Dreadbor. If they play Dread name Dreadbor, I play Shadow. It'll push. Sometimes it's too easy. I was going to play Den of the Bugbear. But instead, I can answer the voice cleanly. And I need an untapped land. Okay. I'm just going to answer the voice of Resurgence while, while the getting's good. Let's clear that out. Leave a 5-5 a five five behind to survive until my Dreadbores are castable. Brutal Cathar. Okay. Uh, untapped land means a lot here. Or at least castable spell. Got there. Play the Takanuma. I'm going to Dreadbore the Cathar. And get my, my shadow back. And now I have so much mana and nothing else to do with it that I don't even mind paying for for a dread bore. This is not meddling mage. Declaration in stone, sure. If such a raging clue right now. And of the bugbear, dread bore. There are two cards left in their hand. I have a clue, castle Lockthwain, and a bunch of creature lands. That scary four drop is in your deck. Voice of resurgence and double voice resurgence were the last two cards they had. Not bad. <laughs> All the cops. Uh, I'll exile Evens. How about that? We're having an extinction event. Evens, get him out. Brox is in my graveyard. Clue token's active. Elvish Mystic's not going to do it. Let's draw a card. Harvester. I'm playing Croxa and Harvester this turn. This is going to be hard to come back from. Take three. Enjoy my 6-6 six, six and my 3-2. He'll probably take one draw step and decide if this game is over. That is exactly what happened. Okay, uh, we saw how their deck works in game one. Just a lot of sticky two-for-one disruptive creatures and mana elves to ramp them out. And then I sideboard out my clunkers, bring in removal and wraths, and clean house. That was great. On to the final round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play in the final round against an opponent with no companion. Mono black mana base in otherwise would be Snapkeep. I have Misery Shadow on two. I have two draw steps before I miss a land. Any land gives me Graveyard Trespasser. Red lands set my hand off. I'm going to keep this. Maybe it's risky, but I'm in. I'll also lock Dwayne and send it. I have to lead on this one if I want to play my shadow on two. Steam vents. Please be Phoenix. Uh-oh. Left up mana. Well, I don't expect this to last long, but it is in play. The removal's a lot worse in this format, but there are enough shocks that maybe want to work. They shocked in that steam vents that didn't cast a spell. Weird. The spell pierce that they're holding up. Okay, there's some kind of Izzet deck, and most Izzet decks in this format use their graveyard in some capacity. Is it Charm? Okay, just killing this thing, sure. This also isn't Dothy Voidwalker if an opponent's creature would die, so they can still mill with Phoenix. Moment of truth. Land, land, land. Easy. Had it. <laughs> yeah, were you worried? That joke never gets old. Graveyard Trespasser. Tell me about the graveyard. Get rid of that Izzet Charm, just in case it matters. Arm carved coast. Yeah, looking Phoenixy. This is the matchup that I mentioned in the deck tech that I was on the other side of and lost to the eventual champion of the Pioneer PTQ I played in last season. The ward discard a card isn't necessarily a drawback for a Phoenix deck. They might want some cards in their graveyard. Fire Prophecy, deal three, and loot. Or put something on the bottom. Discarded Spike Field Hazard. That's not something they'd want to discard, so I'm glad it's gone. Put a card from your hand on the bottom if you do draw a card. Kind of a, a tuck loot. Do we have a term for that? Rummage to the bottom. Bummage. We're calling it bummage now on this channel. That's right where it goes. To the bum. I could try to hit my land drop right now by binning Kroxa. I could also leave up Fatal Push. I don't know that that's important to anything. Yeah, I'm just going to... Discard Kroxa, try to hit a land drop. Didn't get there. Beautiful. I don't think that's normally in Phoenix. I don't know what's going on right now. Maybe this is a very common Pioneer deck that I just don't understand or don't recognize. 
fiery impulse. Okay. I was about to say we still need to respect this uh, steam vents that they shocked in on turn one and haven't cast a one mana spell with yet. Could have been the spike field hazard they were showing. But now I don't have to think about spell pierce, both because I drew the land and because I tapped out. I'm going to stomp the gobbo and pass the turn. I have go for the throat and fatal push available if they try to get rowdy with this mutavolt. Discarded two lands to the fable. Do not want to get rowdy with mutavolt. It just flipped to nighttime in case I draw another card that cares about that. I'm going to run out the bone crusher. I have fatal push up still. If they have counter spells and stuff, go ahead, get it. Impulse in response. Wow, it's jarring seeing a visions impulse in Pioneer. Yikes. I love it, but <laughs> that was not a card I expected to see here. Not an aesthetic. I know the card is legal in the format. Impulse in response. And then what? And make disappear. On our target spell, let's control it pays two. Well, I don't have that. That's fine. That was a two for one. It killed something on the way in. Got a counter spell on the way out. Just softening them up for Kroxa. I can stomp or rip out the throat of this cheeky cheeky. I'm nothing if not gassed up with removal. Okay, this land is great. This gives me double red for Kroxa. Playing the red side of it. And I think I just want to dreadbore this reflection. If they have a counter spell for this, then I can resolve Stomp, which is a card I actually want. And if they don't, then it's gone and I'm not worried about it. We're doing something in the end step. It's Memory Deluge. Big score. Is this some sort of combo deck? Oh, some sort of creatureless indomitable creativity in this format? Oh my god. What's, what's the combo here? I now understand Mutavault. Fable and Big Score. These are all non creature permanents that make creatures. Fable, you got it. I think I should Fatal Push over Stomp here. Because we've seen soft counters. But Kroxa from hand. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I Kroxa from hand, I still have removal up on their turn. I don't know if that's important, but I do like the idea of getting them lower and lower on resources. Brooks is in. Discarded a land, took three. Okay. They do get a rummage with Fable on their draw step. Or on their main phase. Secrets of the key. Investigate. This cast from Graveyard. Investigate twice. Okay. They're currently hellbent. They can spend a treasure in their land to draw a card. This is very obviously a deck that cares about tokens in some way. They're cracking their clue in response to Fable. They could have done that in the end step, but they decided to have less mana this turn in exchange for keeping treasures around. That worries me. I could look up this deck. I'm sure it's easily Googleable. I'll do it during sideboarding. I'm just going to chill for now. Oh, I have the fear. I'd like to get Kroxa going, but we've seen counter spells. I don't know if removal bricks their counter their combo or not. I can cast a lock Dwayne if they don't do anything. So this isn't a huge loss if I pass here. Okay, I've looked it up. Indomitable Creativity is legal in this format. They get Xenagos, God of Revels, and World Spine Worm. Do attack for 30 all at once. Go for the throat can kill the worm, and then it leaves behind three five fives that I have to deal with. But that is certainly what we're playing against here. Secrets of the key in the end step. Got it. Fable gets to flip. Holding up removal does not brick this combo if they have a bunch of artifacts around. They are passing the turn. I'm going to stomp this Kiki Jiki. Soft permission doesn't work here. I mean, they could play Make Disappear and casualty it, which fizzles the, the Bone Crusher. Okay, cool. I'm going to play Red Side Pathway. And go for a Kroxa here. I can pay for soft permission. And I can still go for the Throat the Worm if they make it this turn. My kingdom for a Thoughtseize, my goodness. They're tapping mana in response. They do have two clues. They could just load up their hand here. 
cycled shark typhoon in response that gives them a 2-2 two -two and changes the cards in their hand a little bit gives them more information with which to discard to Croxa. discard no land down to 11 okay that's the turn if they have creativity plus a counter spell they have I think enough to do everything one two three one two target one two it would have to be a one mana counter spell they just played muta vault now it can be a two mana counter spell oh they're just drawing cards with clue give me that we're moving to combat this is a combat based combo and let's start whittling them down back with croxa discard a card get rid of it discard a muta vault took another three I wonder if I should dread bore the, the shark. Push for damage. No, I'm gonna need dread board to get through the worms. If we end up in Wormtown. End of the bugbear. Bone crusher giant. Okay. It's go time. One of us is dead. This turn cycle. So Ken's on making tokens. Okay. Pretty good set of blockers there, but now I have end of the bugbear active as well. Trying to cast some spell. They have red and three colorless in the pool. Then it went away, and then they untapped all their lands. Okay, we're just in combat again. I like that. Every turn they don't do something, I'm winning. Fatal push. I think I'm going to attack first, see what they discard, then decide if I'm going to fatal push a blocker. They can jump the muta vault in front, but even that's not very good. That starts whittling down their mana and their possible targets for stuff. Cracking a clue in response. Reasonable. Working through creati creatable materials. Creativitable. They're at five. Five fatal push. What happens? They have to block Kroxa. I think they have to double block anyway. And then... Or block both. Yeah, they have to block both anyway. And then I can save these instant speed removal spells for the Muta Vault after they sink mana into using them. Alrighty, off we go. And I get creativized from here. Big score is a big hit. And they discarded Spell Pierce. I was uh, correct to respect that card. They've seen 32 cards in their deck. They've seen more because they cast two Fire Prophecies as well. Or was it only one? Oh, and they cast Impulse. That's another three. Fire Prophecies, another one. They've seen 36 cards in their deck. They can't present a win here. I don't know what that says about this deck. I've done very little for the last eight or nine turns other than slowly hit land drops and put creatures into play. And they've gone to Hellbent more than once along, that, along the way between like big scores and stuff. We've seen the last card in their hand. It's not like they had a creativity and have been trying to pick a spot. They just genuinely haven't had a payoff yet. At this point, it's, it's likely that they drew one of their hits as they've drawn a creativity halfway through the deck they have two hits something's happening cycle to shark typhoon for one okay they're still trying to creativity this turn they can use they can activate muta vault and then red 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 one two they can creativity for two with spell pierce up but if they target creatures i can cut the creativity out from under them if they target treasures i have to let it resolve then try to beat the worm on the back end wow Another big score back down to Hellbent. Yeah, they really got nothing going on over there. They've now seen at least 39 of the cards in their deck. Treasures are hitting the graveyard. It's go time, whatever that means. They could creativity for one and just try to hit the worm. Wow, another big score back down to Hellbent. Now they can't even creativity. They still have a land drop. They could creativity for one, I guess. Jeez, that was bad. What a disaster. All right, I'll just fire off this fatal push. And let them know they're dead. That's a locked way, not a legend. Cool. Activate Den of the Bugbear. And attack for a gajillion. There's not a tap all your creatures spell for three and pioneer, is there? Alcat Awakening, sure. Go nuts. Draw one card. Show me who's boss. And attack with all my creatures for a shocking amount of damage. There's definitely not a card in Pioneer that stops this now that we're in combat alrighty weird I'm gonna board in duress and hope that this works duress 
probably go blank as well. Just really want to beat up this hand wherever I can. I'll consider Bank Buster. All right, here's this deck up on the screen. Xenagos World Spine Worm. I'll break her horrors in the sideboard. Dream Trawlers in the sideboard. I should probably expect those. Narset's Reversal. Fires of Victory. Weird. Okay. Rending Volley. No. Disdainful Stroke. No. I should expect Dream Trawler. We saw two Shark Typhoons in their main, so they're not exactly this list, but this is what they're doing. Okay. Respect Dream Trawler. And otherwise... Do I Necromentia them? Hey, no, I, this is probably the matchup that it's for. And this might be a Bank Buster matchup. I want Fatal Push out. And... Noxious Grasp and target Dream Trawler. It's not going to resolve, but it can get it tapped while I push through damage. That's the second tier for sure. Hallbreaker Horror doesn't hit that. Over the Throat does. Misery's Shadow is just a big old creature I can play. Graveyard Trespasser. They don't care about their graveyard much. Bone Crusher, I think, is better than that. And the last question is these Noxious Grasps, and I think it's a no. Like it can kill the worm and any worm tokens that drop out of it. Is instant speed better than Dreadbore? Conditional instant speed versus unconditional kill it. It might be better than Dreadbore. I'm going to look at this deck again. Dreadbore can hit Hallbreaker Horror, I guess. There's no Planeswalkers anywhere in their deck. Okay. I'm going to run with the Noxious Grass. And do this thing. The rest and thoughts he's in the opening grip. Give it to me. I'll keep my hand. Red pathway past the turn. Okay. Another thoughts ease. I'll start with the rest. Let's get a peek over there. Fiery impulse. Big score. Fable. Fire impulse. Creativity. I'm taking fable. Yeah, that's the card that makes their hand function. I'll probably thought seize the big score next. And just try to put them on nothing. Thought sees you. Another fable. They probably thought that was a good draw. I'll take it, please. And pass the turn. Okay, miss your land drop and die. Please. Nice. No land drop. Oh, go blank. That's going to be insane at some point. I could Kroxa them now. Or I could get Bankbuster busting. Harvester just dies to one of these fiery impulses. Yeah, I think I'm going to bust the bank. I would like to pull ahead on cards here. If possible. They miss land drop again. Yeah, the sick joke is they wouldn't have been able to cast these fables even if I didn't take them. Thoughtseize is cracked though. I get to Thoughtseize and still bust the bank. World Spine Worm. Uh, you can have that. I'm taking big score. This is a major run bad fail rate showcase of this deck both game one where they didn't do anything in 40 cards and then this one where even if i hadn't cast three discard spells they wouldn't be doing anything i'm gonna bust the bank draw a card Able's pretty great i could double spell with croxa plus activate i could croxa plus harvester i can play misery shadow which is bigger than fiery impulse oblink's a little awkward because they just have so many shitty cards in their hand, they can dump them and not care. I think I want a Kroxa and Bank Bust. Let's start working through that hand. Eventually I'll be able to cast a creature in Kroxa that is just bigger than the Fire Impulse. I expect to see World Spine Worm be the discard here, which will jump directly into their deck. Oh, this is a trigger? Okay. I assumed it worked like Progenitus where it would immediately go away. So go blank actually would exile that forever, where it would not hit Progenitus. I don't think that matters, but it is uh, something to consider. One, two, three, four. They have one mystery card in their hand right now. Plus the bank. This card is good. I don't play standard, but I know this card is played in that format. And yeah, I get it. Fire Impulse. Two Fire Impulse, two Creativities. You can double Impulse Shouldered. That doesn't answer anything. If I play Shadow, I can still Bank Bust. Oh wait, when I bust the bank, I get a treasure. 
I can get a pilot and a treasure right now. I could get a pilot and fable right now. I could get a pilot and go blank them right now. What's the worst that could happen to me? Like end step, they play that treasure spell or uh, the clue spell. And then I lose. But they haven't spent any mana in many turns. I feel like they would have invested that by now if they had it. And they just drew the land because they would have played it earlier. Whatever they have, they can't cast or it's a reactive spell. Which would also fall into the can't cast category. Okay, I'm going to bust the bank. This gives me a treasure and a pilot. The treasure can cast go blank. And I also just, you know, get to draw the card. I'm going to start beating up their hand. I'm at the point where now I have a threat on the board. They can't just throw away these fiery impulses for free. I think one of the creativities can be pitched. That's not a card you need two of in a game. Discarded creativity and impulse. Yeah, one of each. Sampler platter. If there's impulse, creativity, and whatever that mystery card is in the hand, there goes the impulse. Please don't go land token creativity right now. But I don't even know if that's good. Because if it hits Xenagos, and it's not good. Oh, well, I know that's good. But I have Go Blank, which gets them both anyway. Now, Thoughtseize can dodge Soft Permission and let me drop Fable this turn. There's two Creativities over there. I'll take one of them and play Fable. Okay. I don't believe there's a card in their deck that gives them a Creativity this turn. Because they need to spend mana to cast whatever that card is, and then they need four mana to cast the creativity. Is it charm? Sure. Their one card in hand is creativity. Got it. Fable. Do I even want to discard cards? I think my hand's already great. It's going to keep them all. Graveyard Trespasser is the most medium card here. Okay, fine. I'll discard Graveyard Trespasser. Necromancia that I for sure don't care about. And I'm going to play the Croak so I get their hand empty. Exile five discard spells from my graveyard. I cast a discard spell from my graveyard. The opponent is Hellbent. And I can crew the Bankbuster with Croaksa and get in for some damage right meow. Bust in the bank. Okay, here we are. I don't know how we lose this game. Free card they draw is discarded by Croaksa if they don't play it. And they are... Taking nine from the Kroxa attack. Huldred. Okay, nine, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, they're just dead. Shuldred can crew the Buster, which gives me a attack for 13. And, oh wait, I'm one short. I got excited. Okay, they're at one. I could even put a creature into play after all that. Blood Tithe Harvester also, for good measure. Opponents at 1. Unless there is a Red Sweeper that hits an X5 and an X6 that I don't know about. Alright, they are dead. This was an insane showcase of the fail rate of this deck. I don't know if the deck is better than that or, or what, but yeah, that was weird. Anyway, we 4-1 to this league. Me, having never played this deck before, just looking at the cards on their face value and trying to navigate a format I'm not super familiar with, just easily 4-1'd. I can see why people who are pioneer experts would choose this deck. Our loss was to Sacrifice Rakdos, which is a lower to the ground, more engine-y version of this. This is just sort of all the good cards on their faces. I have no additional analysis for any of the matchups. Like, I don't know big picture if... We beat the decks we were supposed to beat and lost the ones we were supposed to lose to, but we saw how you can navigate them, at least. I imagine most of the flex in this deck is like the Bank Buster, if you want that, or Hearse, or something else. What your removal spread is, like two Go for the Throat, three Dread Boar, one Hagra Mauling. I feel like four Fatal Push is pretty locked, but then your spread of other removal spells is up to you. Having a deck with seven ways to discard Kroxa for value is pretty gross too. Just Fable and Blood Tithe Harvester turning Kroxa into a card draw while putting Kroxa where you want it. Yeah, this deck rules. I, I don't know what else to say. This is near the top for a reason. And if I had a Pioneer tournament tomorrow, I'd probably be playing something like this. Red Rags, thank you for asking me to feature this on the channel. Everyone headed out to Philly or the Pioneer PTQs in the upcoming season. 
I hope this was helpful to you. Whether as you're the pilot or the enemy, I hope you understand a little bit better now. I know I do. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the, the video description, the Patreon, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time.